10 waivers. <laughs> Tank Dell. Tank Dell. Available in 52% of leagues. Uh. Maybe some of that is because of the concussion he dealt with and people needed a roster spot and have an well, IR spot. I mean, he had he he had the concussion, he was out, and then he uh and then he he was out for a week, then they had a bye, and then he came back in the first week back, week eight, he didn't really do anything. That brutal game against Carolina where none of the Panthers and uh, none of the Texans really did anything as well. But the the utilization has been there. Uh, you know, in the two games since he's returned from concussions, he did have a 89% route participation. He's had three different games with seven or more targets this season. He's averaging over 25 fantasy points per game. He scored in all three. And in the middle of me victory lapping my victory lap, the fact of the matter is, is that we, we kept showing this. This is one of the reasons we talked about this in the preseason was about CJ Stroud and Tank Dell both told me personally at the NFLPA rookie premiere how much of a connection they had off the field as well. We know about the skill of both players as well. Tank Dell was somebody that constantly got open at Houston Connor. Oh, this yeah. was a guy that like, it's not a flash in the pan. There was just, right. there was maybe questions about the level of, of competition, but it's there was size, some, small but, guy. And, and a small it. guy, but like, but we're in the NFL is feels like it's moving towards more of these small guys. It is, especially an offense that knows how to use them. This is staff that came from San Francisco. They know how to use Tank Dell in motion. They know how to use him down the field and on the short area stuff. He had almost 200 targets this final season at Houston. So usage to him is nothing new, and he's picked up that role in the Texans offense. Yeah, one thing to know with Tank Dell, his three big games this year came against Indy, Jacksonville, and Tampa Bay, where he went for 70-plus yards and a score in all yep. of those games. So those three teams, Indy, Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, what do they all have in common? They don't really have a pass rush. And when CJ Stroud is in a clean pocket, that unlocks the deeper stuff for Tank Dell. I think that is the key. So I think he's probably good. He's not going to have the same week that he did last uh, week against the Bengals pass rush and the Bengals defense in general, probably. But they have a lot of easy teams on their schedule and he'll provide value. But the other thing is, is the Texans can't run the ball and they yeah. are going to have to throw. So volume maybe gets there into the to that point about Tank Dell in terms of the kind of way he plays. Like they'll manufacture touches for this guy. Like it'll be yes. some bubble screens. It'll be some quick slants. It'll be, you know, some reverses and that kind of stuff. Just want to mention, by the way, this is for much deeper leagues, and we're going to show you full screen at the end of the segment, show you kind of where we rank everyone. But I just want to mention that Noah Brown is out there 97% of leagues. Like, three out of the four games that he's played this year, he's gotten at least a 15% target share. And if the Texans are going to continue to throw as much as they are, which it feels like they are, they again, they have gotten nothing going all year long on the run game. The way they've moved the ball successfully is with C.J. Stroud's arm. And so I think that's going to continue. And it feels like they're settling into a Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown kind of rotation. I don't know that Robert Woods gets this job back. I know when you see some John Mechie or whatever, but it feels like those three guys give the Texans the best chance on offense. Yeah. By the way, Tank Dell, when he scored that touchdown, some of us on the table had Texans minus two and a half in that game. So Tank Dell scores the touchdown to put them up two. Mm. Super excited. And Demeco Ryan takes a knee on the – Didn't get – because, go, because the kick kicker. was out. Yeah. They have a kicker. And then you go and for the two-point. To be fair, I think you probably made the right move because the only thing that could happen there is that they run it back for two the other way. But uh, that was a tough beat. That's yes, a tough Yes, it, way was, to go it was the right move football-wise. It was yeah. the wrong move for wrong Jay's move bank for Jay. account. Yeah, wrong move for yeah. Jay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so somebody should have asked him about that after the yeah. game. Listen, our next one here, Patriots wide receiver Demario Douglas. Yeah. Pop Douglas, he's got the Colts in Germany. 65% available across leagues right now. The upcoming schedule for Douglas. The Colts once again in Germany by week, but then the Giants and the Chargers. And he was heavily involved in New England's passing game in week nine, Barry. He, he's now had three straight games with six or more targets with a 20% target share over that stretch. Again, they didn't have Devontae Parker last week. Kendrick Bourne is out for the year. They like Demario Douglas quite a bit. We talked about this a few weeks ago where it's just like, uh, they liked him a lot in the preseason. I remember talking with Devin McCourty about him, our, uh, our friend and colleague here at NBC Sports. Devin said, who obviously, you know, knows the Patriots really well. Devin's like, they love him there. He had a bad early season fumble and sort of got into the doghouse. You know how it goes in, yep. uh, the, you know, in, uh, in Bill Belichick's land. But uh, whether it's injuries or just, you know, good practices, he's kind of worked his way back. And I know they're excited about the talent here. The only concern is this week they face the Colts, who are really good against the slot. Kenny Moore, one of the best in the NFL at slot corner. They allow the six fewest receptions per, uh, per game to opposing slot receivers. Um, and that's where Douglas lines up most of the time. So this might be a down week for Demario Douglas, but I think this is more real than not. Even when Parker comes back, again, the Patriots have two wins. They have to find out what they have. Like, I think he's going to be their leading receiver the rest of the way. So uh, I really like Pop Douglas. And it's worth noting, by the way, so bad, he's more of a stash. I just want to couch this. He's more of a stash because, again, we don't love him this week against the Colts, and then they're on a bye. It's the Germany game. So they're going to Germany. 
But after that, Giants, Chargers, like the schedule gets a lot easier. So he's more of a later season stash than somebody you can use immediately. I think the kid with Douglas too is I think he's just good as well. And an yeah. offense that doesn't really have any good pass catches. He's the 21st ranked wide receiver by PFF grade. Just gives them an element of explosion that's sorely lacking in that offense. I'm telling you, this is somebody like when I, Deb McCourty and I talked about this guy in the preseason. When I was just like, you know, one of the benefits of working at NBC is that you get access to people like Jason Garrett and Rodney Harrison and Tony Dungy and and Devin McCourty, people that and Chris Sims and people that have you know lots and lots and lots of friends and in, in contacts in coaching positions and players in the NFL and so you hear all this and so I'm always just like hey what are you hearing what are you hearing and like I credit my preseason David Montgomery call in part because Jason Garrett told me like I, you know I spoke to Dan Campbell they love this guy and uh, same with you know Demario Douglas which is Devin told me just like. In, in New England, like in the preseason, they're like, they love this kid, you know. So, anyway, I agree with you. Very talented young player. For deeper leagues, a quick mention with New England, Juju Smith-Schuster available in 81% of leagues. I mean, bottom line is somebody has to catch passes in this offense, and we will do a full recap. I know, kind of. That's like how I picked up Justice Hill on waivers last week because I had no one else to fill it, running back. Desperation. Juju's kind of wide receiver. Juju Justice qualifies Hill. at wide receiver. Yeah. If you need to play a wide receiver and you're looking yeah. for somebody in the NFL that qualifies mm. at that position, Juju does, in Easy fact. Man. You might be down Puka Nakua, Devontae Smith. Yeah. Somebody else all in one week, and you need to play Juju. Yeah. You never know. Our yeah. next one here, Jay, really in interesting and intriguing, and Cardinals wide receiver Michael Wilson, who missed week nine because of the shoulder. Sounds like that's trending in a positive direction. But more importantly, because not only has Michael Wilson flashed as a rookie this season and starts, Kyler Murray is coming back for this team. This is a huge deal. People really underrate Kyler Murray, both as I, a real player and as a fantasy correct. player, where he's been a top seven quarterback consistently because of the value he provides with his leg. Two years ago, at this time two years ago, Kyler Murray was the favorite to win the MVP. He was on a one seed Cardinals team, and then it all kind of fell apart from there. But he clearly has the talent, uh, and I think that he's going to completely change this offense. They're only one point underdogs against Atlanta. If that was Clayton Toon starting for them, that would be significantly larger. Kyler Murray is a a very good player and he's going to help this entire offense I'm excited about Kyler Murray coming back by the way he's not 100% rostered so we'll mention this when we get to quarterbacks as well but it's sort of worth seeing just somehow if Kyler Murray's still out there in your league if somehow he just got dropped um, even in one quarter I, there's no way he's available in two quarterback leagues but in some 10 and 12 team one quarterback leagues he might still be out there um, and you know I, I would grab him even if you have Josh Allen even if you have um, a very good fantasy quarterback because, you know. I would not be shocked if Kyler Murray outperforms like Justin Herbert the rest of the way, particularly in what we saw yeah. last night. Or, or Lamar Jackson. Like, yeah. I mean, Lamar Jackson's had two bad fantasy games. I mean, they're putting up tons of points, but he just, they're running and they're running really effectively. So, right. I mean, yeah, Herbert, Herbert does not look, we'll get into that game in a second too, but Kyler Murray's going to be there in the top five or six among fantasy quarterbacks the rest of the way. So, 100%. Uh, there on him he's in in four of the last six games Michael Wilson has played he's had at least 55 receiving yards so again we need to make sure he's healthy but uh, I definitely like Wilson because I'm I'm bullish on the Cardinals offense going forward under Kyler Murray not a big night on Monday Night Football for rookie wide receiver Quentin Johnson on the Chargers just two catches for 14 yards but still an intriguing player on waivers to the fact that he's available in 66 percent of leagues they have the Lions, the Packers, the Ravens on Sunday Night Football, and then New England. But the bottom line is here, guys, Josh Palmer's hurt. Yep. Mike Williams is out for the year. I mean, the Chargers against the Jets. Palmer's on IR. Yes, he's so on IR. Right, exactly. So he's missing at least the next three. Sure, against the Jets, they didn't need to really throw the ball or do anything. It's not going to be like that every week. Quentin Johnson finally has to play. That's the big thing here. Yeah, he does. But he played 84% of the snaps, and it, it feels clear that, you know, that they have, they've got some other guys there in Los Angeles. But it does feel like Quentin Johnson is going to be op, be out there in most passing plays along with Keenan Allen, and he's the second read, honestly, and probably the third read after Austin Eckler out of the backfield. But uh, just we're banking this on draft capital, pedigree, offense, and opportunity. I, I, I know we – the fact that he played so many snaps that he did last night, I feel like better days are ahead for the Chargers offense, as you mentioned. They're home to Detroit next week, and then they're at Green Bay. They're home to uh, Baltimore and at New England. So you mentioned the schedule. The schedule certainly gets easier than what they faced last night in the Jets. Bills wide receiver uh, Khalil Shakir versus Broncos this week. He's available in 94% of leagues. Jay, we talk every week how the Bills 
moving more to 11 personnel. It allows a guy like Shakir to get on the field more. Only four targets, but still four catches for 57 yards against the Bengals. And at least the matchup with Denver looks promising for a guy in a week. You might be a little bit desperate in your flex spot. Yeah, I think Denver have turned the corner a little bit, but it's still not a defense that scares you at the moment. And Kalushki is not going to see uh, Pat Sertan or anything like that. Right. That'll be reserved to Stefan Diggs. So I think Shakir, just with the amount that this offense throws and their inability to ever commit to the run uh, with Josh Allen at quarterback, uh, I think that Shakir can provide value. I don't think he's limited somewhat because he's clearly the third wide receiver option and the fourth pass catching off option in the offense but with the amount Josh Allen throws with how good Josh Allen is I think that he is a deep league kind of flex option all right let's take a look at Barry's week 10 top wide receiver waiver targets including the deep league ones that we mentioned real quickly number one Tank Dell number two Pop Douglas of the Patriots Quentin Johnston at number three Khalil Shakir number four for the Bills and then the two mentions we had in Juju Smith-Schuster and Noah Brown who's been getting involved in a pass heavy offense over the last three weeks Shakir is more of a, like, if you're desperate, maybe this week kind of guy. Tank Dell is, you know, obvious if he's still out there. The rest are, feel more about, they're more stashy, you know, if you will. I'll also just mention Zay Jones here. Here's the thing. He's missed the last three games. He's missed five of the last six with a knee injury. Doug Peterson was very non-committal when they said, are we expecting Zay Jones back this week? Like, wide range of outcomes here for Zay Jones. He could go on IR. He could be out there, you know, uh, playing a ton of snaps for a very good offense. So, I... I, they're playing the Niners this week. I wouldn't mind if I had a deep league, you know, and I was looking around, or if I had a deep bench, I should say, I wouldn't mind grabbing Zay Jones and just stashing him. Just understand that there's a chance. We didn't put him in the graphic because there's a chance he might be out of another month. I, you know, it's, it's hard to know, but I just want to mention that. Just something to keep your eye on if we get any positive news about Zay Jones. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.